One of the best dates I ever had, I was living in D.C. And this was when The Devil Wears Prada was out. Anybody who knows me knows I can quote The Devil Wears Prada from top to bottom. Like, I love that movie. And we, um, I had never taken a train ride before, so we took the train from D.C. to New York. He took me to um, Nobu 57. And this is like when Nobu was like just starting to pop because it was in every rap song. <laughs> so like it was like, oh, we want to know Boo tonight. So we went to Nobu and then the next day he took me to see The Color Purple. After the play, he took me to Smith & Lewinsky, which was um, the restaurant that Meryl Streep had Anne Hathaway go get her lunch. And then we got back home. He bought me my first Louis Vuitton bag and I was like, okay, yeah, this is great. <clears throat> and then I found out that he was a scammer. So he had this African friend who um, he's like, he owed him some money. And he was like, hey, baby, can whatever his name was, put this money um, in your account. So I was like, sure. So I wake up one morning and there's like, no, oh, I wake up and there's like a million dollars, a negative million dollars on my bank statement. I'm like, a negative million dollars? I'm like, first of all, I'm working for the government. I know I ain't making no million dollars. I'm like, and what's, who, who put out a million? It wasn't saying negative. So um, I called the bank and they were like, oh, that's because there's a fraud alert on your account because the money that was deposited the other day was actually stolen. Good for you, King. Shout out to the dude that finessed her for M. Uh, and shout out to you guys for sending me this clip now. A, I'm never one for scammers and I don't believe in breaking the law and being illegal. Uh, but if we have an opportunity to be able to teach a lesson as a result of it, who am I to step in the way of that, right? And I think that the, the egregious thing here, the first red flag, is that she said the best date that she's ever been on. The best date that she's ever been on, right? It's not based off of his personality. It's not based off of whether or not the guy is a good guy. It wasn't based off of the conversation. Every single thing that she described, pay attention here. Every single thing that she described was based off of material possessions and somebody that gave her gave her this dream that then put her in this euphoric state but not based off of reality it wasn't based off of something that you can build off of it was all based off of material possessions and things that you can buy with money and whenever you see a woman that's focused on a man and how much money he has right because it doesn't mean that she's supposed to get with a broke guy but when you focused on the material things it means that she doesn't value him for what it is that he brings to the table as far as as a man. She values his ability to be able to buy her things and put her in a position that makes her feel good about herself. And so this was a great lesson, right? In the end, you're the one that paid the price for it. You're the one that paid the price. So when you're vetting or when you're trying to figure out whether or not you should talk to a guy, it shouldn't be based off of how he can lead with his money. And it's a, a, a dual lesson here, right? A, guys understand that the value that most women look at you as, which is one of the ways to easily vet them and get them up out of the conversation, is based off of how they see you financially, right? They're looking at it from a business perspective, and so you cannot lead with your money. No matter how tempting it is, it's going to be tempted, tempting because it's the easiest way for you to get to the goal, right? A lot of y'all think that the goal is to get her to like you. You're not even looking at the goal as the pussy, right? You think that the goal is to get her to like you, you know, build a relationship, make her feel good about you, right? It's all up here, it's all ego. And what you don't understand is that the minute that she meets you, she already know whether or not she wanna sleep with you. She already done slotted you subconsciously, whether she know it or not, into a category based off of whatever it is that you led with. So if you led with reality and was like, Yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm just about good vibes, good energy. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really trying to make this a thing, but if you want to go and have a conversation, then we can do that. Then that's how she gonna have to lead with. Now, whatever that manifests into or a change into, that's between y'all. But the way that you start out is the way that you're, you're going to have to continue. You cannot put the genie back in a bottle based off of uh, some perceived per, uh, uh, thought that you're going to be able to change into this thing. You're going to leave with your money what you think she's going to expect for you, right? The other part of this conversation is I wish women would get realistic, right? I wish they would start paying attention and start picking good guys and stop focusing on the things that they can get out of a man, right? 
Because whenever you say your best date is something that was material. Yeah, I get it. Listen, shout out to Meryl Streep and uh, Anne Hathaway. One of my favorite movies, too. One of my favorite movies, too. But if a dude after a date, first of all, I'm not doing no train ride. I'll do a, a tram, you know what I'm saying, from one terminal to the next if I'm going over there to get my baggage claim. But I'm not doing no train ride, right? Nah, I get it. Listen, oh, you know, romantic. It's a thought that went into it. Nah, he finessed you. And he taught you a million-dollar lesson as a result of it. And I'm sure Bank of America is looking at you funny and you looking at them and they're looking at you. And they're like, nah, we don't really want to do business with you no more because of your inability to be able to vet better the people who you give your account number to. You know what I'm saying? Now you looking stupid and you got to work with them folks in order to try to get them off of your off of your neck because you technically owe them a million dollars for getting finessed by the Nigerian scammers. African scammers, I don't know what she said. But the point is, you know, he took her to all of the best restaurants. What did she expect? What did she what did she think was going to happen? First of all, I think she left out a part of the story. I'm going to be honest with you. One part of the story that she left out, because I don't know a man, not one on the internet or in real life, I don't know a man that's taking you to Nobu, train rides back and forth, taking you to buy and shop, and you go and get a handbag and all of this other nonsense, and you a government employee, and he not getting no gawk gawk 3000 out of it. See, we don't want to have the real conversations, you know what I'm saying? She don't want to tell you of what she did later on that night for that handbag and the next day and the next night and probably the next day. Jaws was probably hurting, couldn't walk straight, so he bust you down and he got an M out of you. And all it took for him to do is play on your vulnerabilities and your insecurities because you were so focused on what you can get out of him instead of being focused on vetting him for the person that he really was. And that's why dating don't really work because Dating is just really trying to figure out who somebody's representative is and then deflower them. But instead, you got finessed. Good for him. It's a lot of guys that's out here. And again, I don't <laughs> I don't support the scammers. But if somebody had to get finessed out of this conversation, I'm glad it was her. And I hope you hurt her. I hope you learned a lesson, right? Because why you? Right? That's the first thing she should have she should have asked herself. What makes me so unique that I get to get taken to Noble. Am I that bad? Do I have that great of a personality? Am I adding that much value? On a first date, you get to go to all of the best, finest restaurants. You get to go handbag shopping. You get to get trips from here to there, from one end of the country to the other end of the country. And you not got no red flag. None of your spidey senses is going off. You ain't got nobody in your inner circle. Ain't no man around you. Not a father, not a brother, not a friend that can give you the game and tell you, hey, fam, if it's too good to be true, don't give him your account number. But I think it's a part of the story that's being left out out of that. I want to know what happened that night once y'all got home from Nobu. What did you do for him in order to make him feel good? What did you do to earn that handbag? Did you return a handbag? Did you get a handbag to Bank of America? Did you throw that fool back up that you ate at Nobu? I don't know. I don't believe so. Hey, y'all let me know what y'all think happened at the end of the night. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm over here overlooking this water. We having a good time. We chilling. I'm going to be in New York for the Patreon meetup. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later. <laughs>